الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Dear brothers, inshallah, I'll tell you some very interesting du'as which have been narrated which we pray whilst washing each part of our body in wuzu. Now, you might not remember these du'as, so I'm going to tell you the translation of it, which is very easy to remember because it is relevant to the part of the body which you are washing. Now remember that to pray any du'a <coughs> inside the toilet or bathroom nowadays where you make wuzu is not allowed. So either you pray it outside or if you're making wuzu in the toilet or you know in the bathroom where the toilet is as well, you can just try to imagine that dua or the translation of that dua. Just trying to bring those thoughts which have been reflected in the dua will inshallah make everything that you're doing more meaningful. The very first thing we should do is obviously as you know that before we start making wuzu we should say Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Inshallah this will purify your entire body. Now it is stated that when you wash your hands, or in fact when you wash your when you wash your hands, that is when you say Bismillah Rahman Rahim. When you wash your mouth, the dua is that O oh Allah, help me in the tilawat of the Quran and to do your zikr and to do your shukr and to do good worship. Subhanallah. And then when you wash your nose, when you clean your nose, you make the dua that, O oh Allah, make me smell the beautiful fragrance of Jannah. Subhanallah. And do not make me smell the unbearable stench of Jahannam. When you wash your face, you pray, O oh Allah, enlighten my face. Enlighten my face when some faces will be bright and some faces will be dark. So on the day of Qiyamah, people will have faces according to their faith and according to their uh, amal. <clears throat> when we wash our hands, when you wash your right hand, you make the dua that, Oh Allah, give my book of deeds in my right hand, which is a good sign. So give my book of deeds in my right hand and make the reckoning easy for me. When you wash your left hand, the dua is that, Oh Allah, do not give my book of deeds in my left hand and not from behind my back. So this is a sign of utter humiliation when some people will be given their book of deeds in their left hand. Then when you do the masa of the head, you make the dua that, O oh Allah, shade me under the shade of your throne on the day when there will be no other shade. So the only shade on the day of Qiyamah is the shade of the Arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then when you do the masa of your ears, the dua you pray is that O oh Allah makes me among those who listen to a lot of talks but only follow and practice <coughs> the best of them. So we listen to a lot of things but not all are to be followed. Not all are to be practiced upon. So we make dua, O oh Allah, make us follow and practice only on the best. And the best of the qawl, the best of the talk is the Qur'an and Sunnah. Then, when you wash your neck, or when you do the actual masa of your neck, the dua you pray is, O oh Allah, free my neck from the fire of hell. And when somebody is thrown into the fire of hell, generally what happens is they hold them by their neck and throw them. So this is a sign that our necks won't be held by the angels inshallah and will be uh, free from the fire of hell. Then when you wash your right feet, the dua you make is, O oh Allah, make my feet firm and stable on the pulsirat on the day when many feet will stumble. So make my feet stable on the day on the pulsirat. And finally, when you wash your left feet, it's a long dua, but I'll just shorten it. The main thing is, O oh Allah, forgive all my sins. Forgive all my sins. When you finish your dua, or when you finish your wuzu, the dua that you should pray 
or at least the meaning you should have in your mind, is, Oh Allah, make me amongst those who do Tawbah, who are repentant, and makes me among those who are pure. Because you were cleaning your body with water, but inshallah these thoughts and the worship that you're going to do is actually going to clean your inner self as well. Now, uh, the beauty is that wuzu itself is not a worship. Okay, you get the up for the intention, but it is not a worship. It is something which leads to worship. Only after you make wuzu, you can pray namaz. Only after you make wuzu, you can do the tilawat of the Quran. Only after you do wuzu, you can do tawaf and so on. So it is something which takes you to worship. Now, at that point, when you are doing something which is not ibadat in itself, but it is something which takes you to worship, you are bringing all these thoughts about akhirat in your mind. You are thinking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already when you are making wuzu. You are thinking about the day of judgment already when you are making wuzu. You are thinking about your book of deeds already when you are making wuzu. You are thinking about your face being dark or bright when you are making wuzu. So inshallah, this will actually prepare you for the worship that you are going to do. The wuzu itself is preparation for your worship. So whilst you are washing, that is preparing you for the zahir of the worship. And all these thoughts will inshallah uh, prepare you spiritually for the worship that you are going to do after. So inshallah, watch this clip over and over again so that you can know <coughs> this dua. And bring these duas in your mind when you are making wuzu, no matter where you are. Inshallah, tabarak wa ta'ala, your wuzu will be more meaningful, meaningful inshallah, and the ibadat that will, you will do after, hopefully inshallah, will also be more meaningful. Wa akhiru da'wana, and alhamdulillahi rabbil